where it could be not even in the brain. And, uh, but it w how does it work? It, there are these indestructible wave functions that are transmitted and received by the brain. Um, and, and there's probably quantum processes that are involved. Now, we dispute that pretty vigorously. Um, it's not consistent with the evidence. The evidence is, it's overwhelming in our view, that NDEs <coughs> from NDEs is that the NDE is a localized, individualized entity. And that the local, and evidence of that is local of con locus of consciousness, conscious experiences, always in a particular location and space and perspective, even when you're in the transcendent realms, and even when you experience becoming one with God or with the all. Uh, you are still experiencing it, you still remember it, even though you feel that you are expanded out, it's still you. And, and when you come back, of course, it's still you. Uh, and the end ear, <coughs> and the end ear encounters other entities, entities that are individualized and localized, deceased relatives, other deceased humans, um, friends and so on, and um, transcendent beings. So I everything that you encounter, at least of, of a conscious nature, is, is localized, except perhaps your experience of God. But some people have a localized experience of God. God was a being or was in a particular place. Uh, others do not. Um, and, um, and of course, the other bit of evidence is, is that the NDE phenomena involve, include, definite interactions with physical processes. If the NDE, wa if our consciousness is non-local, then it, it these effects would not happen. Physical interaction in the NDE could not happen because it's non-local wave functions. Um, and <coughs> so we feel that the fundamental aspect of the mind is localized individuality or beingness, uh, the localized individuality or beingness of the person. And in our view, uh, the individuality aspect of the mind is fundamental. And the non-local aspects of the things that you experience in the NDE are there, yes, but they're secondary. And so the mind is localized and has both physical attributes and non-local attributes. Now, another topic is the hard problem of consciousness, which is a philosophical issue. Uh, but it's also very much in the, in the forefront of debate about consciousness. And the hard problem is that you can't explain subjective phenomenal experience solely from physical phenomena. In other words, you're, why do you have consciousness? Why do you see red the way you see it? Up, oh, doesn't matter if you're just a brain and a body. But it does matter because we know that we're conscious. So why are we, con how could we be conscious if we're just a brain and a body? And, and our answer to this problem, it's a conundrum right now in the, in the philosophical world. Either phil philosophers dismiss it or they um, don't know how to answer it. And that is, conscious experience depends on a second entity with physical attributes, namely the conscious mind. It is an entity. It's the seat of our conscious awareness and as obviously is evident in NDEs, wherever you are in, in the, wherever your mind is, that's where your consciousness is. And even if you yo-yo back between uh, being in the body and out of the body and in the body and being out of the body as Joe McMonigle did um, in his NDE, his friend was pounding him on the chest and he was out observing what was happening. You know, he had had a heart attack, cardiac arrest, and and his friend, it wasn't CPR, but just pounded him on the chest. Every time that happened, he would feel a click. And he'd be in his body looking up at his friend. And then he'd feel a click, and he'd be out. And when he was in his body, it was pain. So it was click, pain, click, no pain, click, pain, click, no pain. And this went on for 10 minutes. But the point is, wherever his mind was, mind entity was, 
his consciousness was. And um, so what, how do we become conscious? You know, how do we have subjective experiences, phenomenal experiences, is through the neural activity in the specific regions of the brain when they interact with the mind. And so you have this picture of the brain and the mind, the, in, the impulses from the brain induce the phenomenal experience. And conscious experience necessarily arises within the mind's field of phenomenal experience when the mind interacts with the brain. Okay, and this, um, the mind uh, is for us a structured energetic field that does not fit any known physical phenomena or physical laws. And whatever that has happened in the past with phenomena in um, physics or any, any of the sciences, uh, what has happened is that what constitutes physical reality is expanded. And we think that the mind it, it, as a new aspect of re reality is no different. What we need to do is expand what we mean by reality, physical reality. Physical reality includes our minds and it includes all of the transcendent things, at least by implication, with, all, with everything you know, that you experience in, in uh, the NDE. And, um, and then uh, the mind entails, it, the, and therefore the mind entails a new fundamental prop properties and is uh, this fu new fundamental aspect of reality. And it, you, your mind is you. Your mind is in your body. That's where you are. Okay? When your mind leaves your body, then you are wherever your mind is. Um, okay. It is the seat. And this is, I th we feel that this is very important. The mind is the seat of the essential selfhood of the person. It is the person. Okay. Thank you. I thought that there was a contradiction between the statement that um, there has to be f physical interaction with light energy, with photons as we know them, on the one hand. And on the other hand, offering the example of the dog who could see the boy's spirit or his discarnate mind floating around. Right. Um, I think that is an inconsistency. We don't know what the dog is seeing, but there are cases, for example, in phantom limbs and, and other things where it, it is probable that the, the light is physical light that the dog is seeing. The dog, it, dogs are uh, much more sensitive to the purple range of, of visible spectrum, and we infer to the ultraviolet, the near ultraviolet range. And we think that the oscillations of the mind, the structure of the mind with these minute dipoles is, is um, inducing uh, ultraviolet light. And the dog is seeing that. Ultra, in the ultraviolet spectrum. Yep. I see. And that's why we don't see it. <laughs> w one other thing. Uh, uh, concerning out of body experiences while not dead, um, while the human body is not dead. Uh, in my experience, you can have consciousness in both places. What uh, you sense to be, what I sense to be the real me about it's the same distance that we are apart now. And also the, the, the physical human body that's about to chomp down on a hamburger with, with, with consciousness in both places at once. Yes. And we'd say, well, <coughs> we'd say that that would be typical of an end of ear that you would have that. Most people don't have that. They, their consciousness is like, here, that's it. And uh, uh, when, you, when you are, but if you're expanded, then where is your, your consciousness is, you know, in go, in including a whole bunch of other things. Uh, one last thing. In your presentation, I thought it, it would be helpful if you define the pronoun you, Y-O-U. Because when you say you do this or you feel that, 
I wasn't sure if you're talking about the human body or, or the spiritual lessons or, or what you were, were thinking about. Okay, well, yeah, all, all experience, uh, if you, if I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to, but is your subjective phenomenal experience. So it's what your mind is experiencing, what you're experiencing as a mind. Okay, yes. Hello, good afternoon. This is my first experience with this kind of conference and even with near-death experiencers. I am currently working in aging services and I find interesting in your presentation some similarities uh, in terms of NDE with traumatic brain injury, with just the aging processes, whether they're disease diagnoses, yes or um, be they cardiopulmonary vascular, uh, endocrinology, so on and so forth. Uh, could you very briefly um, address how this can fit with current understandings of those who have any form of dementia who may also have had an NDE or not? Right. I find it very <coughs> intriguing that it is, it, it's very reflective for me. Yeah, well, the, when you have uh, uh, impairments of the brain there, w and you're in your body, then your mind is impaired as well because your mind de is dependent upon the brain. But, when, but the mind is whole and complete and, and is not diseased or damaged. So that when you have an NDE, and this is frequently reported, uh, you're, you're out of your body and all of a sudden if you're blind you can see and you can hear if you were deaf and, uh, and the leg that you were missing now is there and the pain that you had is gone. And, and uh, all of those things are bodily uh, dependencies that when you come back to your body, you got them again. Now particularly with dementia, we believe that, that uh, the structures that are being damaged uh, with, with the dementia, if it's Alzheimer's for example, that those interfere with uh, the, pro the action of the, um, of the mind and, uh, and, and would be finished, would be uh, uh, dissipated, would, would go away and they do sometimes there are brief prior to death there are brief periods of lucidity just prior to death where the mind is is loosening from the body from the brain and the body and therefore uh, you 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 have those faculties back again you don't lose your memory your memory is part of your mind uh, but uh, you can't recall those memories because it requires the hippocampus and when the hippocampus is damaged or other parts of the brain are damaged they, it won't work I think we have to stop I'm sorry <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you.